All right, now, let's get this out of the way. In Mark 4, that day was evening came, and he said to his disciples, okay, now the day he's talking about, he if he, he was in Mark 3, you'd see, uh, no, it's in Mark 4, I guess he does all that. I mean, he's talking to the multitudes and the crowds, and he's wore out, you know. On that day and evening came, he he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, he took him along. They took him along just as he was, okay, in the boat. Now, that, that phrase there, just as he was, as he was wore out, he was tired. You know, he, he'd done a lot of preaching, a lot of uh, healing the sick and everything. He and he was he was wore out from it. I'm sure he, he, the spirit leaves his body. You know, uh, you know, as he said when uh, the woman touched the hem of his garment, and he said, "I felt the power go out." And that was in another passage from here, though. But uh, but the power would go out from him when he, uh, even Billy Graham said that when uh, he said he he didn't feel like he's uh, such an anointed preacher. He said, but he, he felt like his anointing came on him when he was giving the altar call. He said, that's when I could feel the power go out, you know. And uh, anyway, Jesus had preached to these people all the time, and the power went out from him, and they took him as he was, you know. And so he was tired, and they, they were also other boats with him. A fur furious squall came up meaning a bad storm, you know, and the waves broke over the boat and it was nearly swamped. Now, okay, let me run by, run this by you too. These are fishermen. These are trained, all these disciples, you know, or, you know, the most of them were fishermen and they knew what to do on the waters and they had encountered storms before, but this must have been a pretty good squall that came up because they were scared, you know, and Jesus was in the stern, and what was he doing? He was asleep on a cushion. On, and some translations say pillar. You know, somebody that puts their head under on a pillar, they uh, they pretty much mean to go to sleep. Did Jesus know a storm was coming? Mm, probably. Uh, you know, he, he knew he knew he was going to go to Jerusalem and die that time. It says in Mark uh, 16, I believe it is, when he's talking to Peter, and Peter said, you know. Let's get swords and do not do that. He said, get behind me, Satan. Remember that? But he was he knew what was going to happen to him then. So, you know, in his deity, he had deity and he had man, uh, human, you know, in him, flesh. So I don't know if he knew this storm was coming like that, but if you go back here and read, it says in the red, it says, let us go to the other side. And this is God talking to them, but I don't think they understood just how much God he was. And you know, he was 100% God. He was 100% man. Okay. There was other boats with him. A furious squall came up. Squall is a good word for big storm out on the water, I guess. And uh, Jesus was asleep there on the, on the cushion. Here I am. I'm, I'm trying to get my, part, uh, my place back. Okay, the disciples woke him up. And they were all frantic, you know. They were scared to death. And teacher... Don't you care if we drown? And he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. Now, I like the, the other translations that say that he he uh, put his hand up and he said, peace, be still. He said, right here, it says, quiet, be still. Looking in the red there, it says, quiet, be still. Then the winds died down and it was completely calm. Complete, you know, and his disciples, he looked at his disciples and said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You know, even after they've been with him all this time. And that's the way we get. You know, we'd be Christians for 10 years or something, and if some circumstance will come up, well, the first thing we think about is, how do, how do I fix this? You know, that's what they were doing, trying to scramble around on this boat and try to uh, trying to fix it yourself, you know. Trying to trying to maneuver the sails and take the sails down and all that, whatever they need to do instead of going to Jesus to start with. Because as soon as they went to Jesus, he puts his hands up and says, Quiet, be still. And the winds died down and they it became completely calm. 
And he asked them, why are you so afraid? They, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey. So they were starting to get an idea of just, just who Jesus was here. But back to what I'm saying, we, we try to do, we try to fix things ourselves. We're running into a storm. We're, we're frantic. And we're kind of praying, throwing arrows toward heaven, saying, help me, Lord, you know, and all this. But when we really go to him and say, Lord, I need your help. I cannot do this on my own. That is what we got to come terms with. We can't do it on our own. We have to have God. Well, then God will put his hand up and say, peace be still. Does that mean our problem's going away? No, their storm went away of the exterior. The storm they could see and the, of the winds they could feel and the and rain coming over the boat and the waves coming over and all that. And, then, and uh, all the turbulence in the in the water. All that went away. But I'm talking about this quiet, be still, going into our hearts. You know, it's like the McCainies. They had uh, this old gospel group. They have a song called, Sometimes He Calms the Storms and Sometimes He Calms Me. See, Jesus will say, peace be still to our, uh, to our inside, to our spirit, and then we'll have peace in our soul and all the turbulence going on around us. And uh, we'll be at peace because we know Jesus is in control. Just like in this country and in our world and everything, the way it looks, we want to ask Jesus, where are you? Uh, how can all these things happen? But we have little faith. Why are we so afraid? You know, because he he has got this under control. He looked. He's going to stick his hand up, like he said, "Peace be still," and inside our souls will be peace and quiet. And then, but God, God's going to take care of this country. He's going to take care of our our family life. Everything, no matter what happens, God's with us, and God loves us even though it don't look that way sometimes. I mean, when we get down and we, and sometimes, you know, we're broke and we go out to the car and there's a flat or it breaks down, you know, it's even more money we got to spend. And and we feel like, God, you know, I paid my tithes last week. Why is this happening? Well, just peace be still. Know on the inside. Just know in your knower that God is in control and he's taking care of you. And uh, it's something we always got to remind ourselves. I have to remind myself that all the time. Um, thank you for listening to my rant, listening to the video. Please tune in for the next one. And, and you know, as bad as it is, it's got to get better, right? So God bless y'all for sticking with me to the end. And I will see y'all in the next one. God bless you.